So Rex Mom would be here normally, but he had a bit of a travel <laughs> interruption trying to get home from a trip. So I am filling in on the taste. So I'd like to welcome you to our show talking about food, dining, and all that fun that we have in the great state of Rhode Island. So today we're talking about the sweeter side of dining. I know I have a ridiculous sweet tooth that's a little bit of a problem. <laughs> so we're going to address that and talk about some really fun stuff and some sweets. So I'd like to introduce our first guest. We are talking to Melissa Denmark. She's the pastry, pastry chef at Greasy's. I'd like to welcome Melissa Denmark to the show. Hi, how are you? Oh, great, how are you? Good, so good to see you. I'm gonna have you scoot a little bit closer sure. to our nice lovely red tape. So we were chatting just a few moments ago yeah. and you were saying that even though Gracie's was closed yesterday uh, and you weren't at work, you were still doing a ton of baking. You made a ton of stuff yesterday. Yeah. So tell us just why you love baking and just a little bit about what you do. Yeah, sure. So like you said, I just love to bake so much that I find myself doing it during my days off. And like just yesterday, I made um, English muffins, I made marshmallows, ice cream, bread. So I just have so much fun doing it, mostly because it's an art, but it's also a science, and it's really a fun way to merge the two passions together. You can be super creative and use ingredients that are seasonally inspired, which is a big thing that we do at both Gracie's and Ellie's. And it's just a fun way to show somebody that you care, too. You can give, like I gave away a bunch of those cookies that I made yesterday to friends and family, and, you know, everyone is so excited to see cookies. Oh, my God. I mean, what? <laughs> who wouldn't want that, yeah. right? What a great gift. <laughs> so, well, wait, let's back the train up a moment. Did you say you made marshmallows? I did, yeah. And then I had some friends over for hot cocoa just to get a little respite from the freezing, freezing cold yesterday. Oh, my God. How do you even do that? How do you make a marshmallow? You know, it's really easy. People are always so shocked no. when, <laughs> no, I'm telling you, it is. So if you have a mixer, you basically just take egg whites and sugar and then a little bit of gelatin to set it and you can throw in any flavors that you want. Vanilla, you could do cinnamon, you could do Ooh. like spicy and add some cayenne. Oh, and then like you this. whip it until it's this big cloud fr frothy and beautiful and silky and then once you set it in a pan, it sets up in like two hours. This sounds gorgeous <laughs> and delectable. I like the idea of having something spicy, yeah. like a spicy hot cocoa or something like that. Exactly. Mm, I, I love had that. a little whiskey to my hot chocolate too, so it, it was perfect. You needed that after yesterday, after doing all that baking. Exactly. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about how you got to where you are, because you are the pastry chef at Gracie's, and Gracie's, as people know, fine dining in Providence, mm -hmm. a beautiful reputation, uh, not only in the state, but to, in the country. So let's got, talk a little bit about how you got to where you are. Yeah, so I attended Johnson & Wales, and that's where I got my professional training. Um, before that, I spent a little bit of time just kind of getting a feel for the industry. So my first job in a restaurant was when I was 15. Um, and Pretty young. I, yeah, <laughs> and I was just kind of checking out the scene. I um, did a program with my high school where I got to shadow some really cool French chefs and pastry chefs in my hometown outside of Baltimore. And then that just kind of enticed me so much that I would spend like all this time baking after school. I would make chocolate chip cookies like almost every day. I was so into watching the Food Network and reading all my mom's cookbooks. And I just found myself um, totally immersed in the culture. And then my dad kind of gave me a little push when I was getting ready to go to college. He was like, you know, this is not just a hobby. This seems like a really special talent that you have. And there are places where people like you can go, like Johnson & Wales. And so I went for it. I went for it and I studied there for four years, um, surrounded by some really talented instructors and pastry chefs and learned a ton about um, really the science behind baking. And then from there, I went to Gracie's after graduation. Oh, wow. Right away? Right away. Good for you. <laughs> yeah. During college, I spent some time um, exploring different avenues within the industry. You know, I, I tried um, being a cake decorator. I tried working at a hotel, um, a small pastry shop, a large pastry shop. Just to, you know, there's so many different avenues that you can take. People think of the industry and the restaurant industry um, as kind of just like one direction, but there yeah. really is so many facets. And so I would kind of, you know, like Goldilocks, like tried a little bit this, a little bit of that, and then finally found um, something that I think is perfect for me at Gracie's and Ellie's where I can be creative and I can be around people that are really passionate 
we're always changing the menu, always talking about how to be better and different, and um, it just keeps everybody really engaged and inspired. And how important do you think it is to cater to not only what you're doing and working with your coworkers and staying engaged and enthusiastic about what you do, but also serving the customers and hearing about what they want and, and what kind of sells on the menu? How important is it to find that balance? Oh, it's super important. It's super important. And what's nice about um, what we do is that we're so engaged with our, our guests. Um, I consider the servers at Gracie's to be like our ambassadors, so they are able to make those connections with the guests and explain, you know, the little nuances on their plate that they might not n know otherwise, you know, like where that cornmeal came from or, you know, who grew those fennel flowers. And then in return, the servers are able to come back and say, you know, the guests really loved this part of that dish or they told me that that was really acidic and really bright. And so it's, it's a good way for us to learn a lot about what's going on and we also just take feedback, you know, through the website and through comment cards and stuff, and we're yeah. always reading them every single day and, and using that as, like, a catalyst for a conversation of how we can grow and be better. Yeah, so it's all the time. And, I mean, I think that's so interesting that you work together as a team and collaborate, and you're kind of the ones who are innovating, and you also have to find that balance of who's consuming the product. Absolutely. So it, it, and you have to be those innovators and also cater to the people who are consuming the product. Mm -hmm. I find it so interesting, and it must be really rewarding to know that what you're making, people are, are, are taking I mean, it has to be yeah. such a rewarding feeling. It is. It is. Because that's the point at the end of the day is you want to make people happy and you want them to return and, and remember it, too. I love meeting people that are like, I dined at Gracie's like two years ago and this is what I had. And this and they remember like all the little components and it, it always touches my heart so much. I'm like, yes, thank you. I'm so glad you enjoyed that. And it reminds me, too, because I'm, I'm kind of forgetful in that way where I'm like, oh, yeah, I do remember that dish. I loved that. Great. I'm glad you experienced that. Do you find that dessert is a dying breed when people are going out, or do you think that there is still a need to have uh, types of dessert and, and always doing that innovation and finding something new and unique? Because do you think, do you think that it's still there and valuable? Mm -hmm. I do, I do. I think that ending the meal with something sweet is just a, a perfect close, and it's um, you know very traditional, and even... Even if a restaurant doesn't have a dessert menu necessarily, you know, so many people will come in to Gracie's or to Ellie's because they want something sweet after their meal. So even if people haven't dined at Gracie's, they still get a lot of guests come in just to do the dessert tasting or just grab a drink and a dessert at the bar. So I think that there is something really nostalgic and fun about having something sweet, especially at the close of the meal. And I would like to say that that'll be around for a long time. Especially if you have someone as talented as you who is thinking of these wonderful and, and amazing dishes. Um, so I was looking at Facebook over here just at some of the stuff that you've worked on and some of the, the Facebook posts that we've had. Mm -hmm. um, let me pull it up over here. Oh, okay. So uh, I, I saw something. Chestnut ice cream. What? Yeah. And, and some of just the mixings and fixings and stuff on top of that. Tell me about making ice cream and some of the stuff that you like to create. Ice cream has got to be one of my favorite things to make because it's such a fun way to sneak in different infusions and different ingredients because like for instance we've done like what white bal balsamic like using white balsamic oh, vinegar what? or using like lavender or using Ooh, like, lavender sounds good yeah and all all these things that have um a very pale color so on the plate it looks almost vanilla and then some people go out and to bite it and they're like oh my god what is this you know so it's a really fun way to sneak a flavor in there and also because it's so creamy and the way it melts on your palate when you have that mixed with all the other components on the plate, it really adds something super special and, and can tie a dish together really well. So something like the chestnut ice cream was a fun way to make um, some richness and some nuttiness onto that plate. And is also, we, we did that a little while ago to celebrate, um, you know, some of the winter feelings that you get when it's just cold and it's snowy and you just want to like curl up next to the fire. There's some other components on that plate that just were meant to be reminiscent of just like a really snowy day. And the dish, I mean, it, it looked gorgeous. What were some of the other components that you mixed in? Because it, it, looked, yeah. it almost looked like Thanksgiving. That's yeah. what it reminded you know, me of. You because there was the cranberries on there too mm -hmm. and we did um, a coffee soaked genois, which is a sponge cake. So there was like this really like bright coffee flavor as soon as you 
stuck your spoon into it, and then that balanced out the nuttiness mm. of the chestnut and mm. that bright acid from the cranberry. Oh, oh, oh. It, it just, it looked like feeling warm. Good. And, oh, and, that's awesome. And that's kind of what you were going for. It is, yeah. Yeah, and, and like I said, ice cream can be, like, such a surprise to people, too. So, I mean, at Ellie's, we also do our ice cream sandwiches in the summertime. Fun. And we put them in between two French macarons. And that's a really fun way for people to experience ice cream. Like, you know, it's like a childhood beach treat oh, yes. that you can get over at Ellie's, you know, and it can be really nostalgic for people and just fun. So let's talk about the partnership with Ellie's. Uh, and so there is a partnership there, and you said you split your time just a bit. I do, yeah, and I have great teams at, at both locations. So Ellen, the owner of Gracie's, opened up um, Ellie's Bakery about four years ago, and our purpose there is to showcase some really beautiful French macarons, delicious coffee, pastry, and lunch. So we Yum. have all sorts of items when you walk into the door, and um, our aim is to like you know get people away from the hecticness of the day, the busy streets of Providence, and really like have a pause and enjoy a moment, enjoy like a beautiful cup of coffee or a little sweet treat, and then they can you know walk, step out the door, hopefully feeling like a little bit like happier and brighter. And so here I am thinking, uh, okay, that sounds wonderful. Yeah. I should leave right now know, and go do like that right and go around the corner. <laughs> okay, and so March 20th is a special day. And here I am saying macaroon, and here I am saying it lovely and beautiful macaroon. Yeah, you got to say French macaron because macaron. Because macaroon, people think of the, the coconut, like, mounds of okay. coconut and egg white, but macaron. Yes. It's macaron. The almond flour meringue cookie. Okay, so I'm saying this totally the incorrect way, and you're saying it totally beautiful at macaron. And they're gluten free, so Kate and I can eat yeah. some. Kate! Yeah. All right, so yeah. March 20th is macaron day, mm -hmm. uh, and you have something special going on, it seems to me. Oh, we do. We're having so much fun with it. So, we are going to have a big bowl of French macarons that are packaged. You could stop right there and I'd be happy. <laughs> Okay, but continue. They're all going to be packaged individually, and you won't be able to see, like, the color, the flavor inside, but if you, one in this whole bowl is going to be painted bold, and just, like, really want the style, if you get the golden macaron, then you get a super awesome prize. What? That's super fun! Awesome. Yes. Oh! So that's March 20th. So what goes into making a macaron? Like, how do you make them taste so different and unique and light and airy and delicious? And, yeah. and how do you decide which kind of flavors you're going to do? Because you could pick one and it could be mint and you could have one and it could be chocolate, hazelnut, turkey. Like, I mean, they're yeah. so different. <laughs> There's so many different inspiring flavors. Yeah. yeah, and we do six different flavors every month. So three of them stay the same year round and then three of them change every single month of the year. Wow. And See, it's, I'm telling you, it's a lot of flavor. Yeah, it is. It is, and we have a lot of fun with it too. We incorporate um, some guest favorites too. Sometimes on Facebook, you know, we'll say we want an, an inspiring flavor that has to do with herbs, you know, and everybody will comment, and then there's a vote. So we love to get people's feedback from it. And then we also have a bakers meeting where all of the bakers on the team get together and we pick a theme, and then everybody kind of like shouts out different ideas. So next month because of Easter, we're doing jelly bean flavors. Uh -huh. And so that was a fun day to get together and kind of call out, like, what are your favorite jelly beans? And, like, we bought a bag and we were all tasting them and trying to, to piece together what we wanted to do. But there's two main ways that I like to incorporate flavor into them, in the shell and in the filling. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's two um, almond meringue cookies that have uh, their sandwich with a little bit of filling in between. So you can really jam-pack a lot of flavor even though it's one small little bite. So you can put, you know, like cinnamon or tea mm -hmm. or coffee inside the shell. So you get this like burst of flavor as soon as you bite through that like crispy, soft shell. And then on the inside, you can infuse buttercreams, ganache. You can do, we um, did like a buttered popcorn flavor for oh, one of the jelly beans. So we infused popcorn into the butter wow. and use that to make like a really fluffy buttercream with. We have a matcha French macaron right now on the menu, which is so good. Mm. And we have matcha, so it's like a bright green shell and a bright green filling. So there's tons of different ways that you can incorporate flavor, and there's really endless possibilities, too. It's really, really popular right now when people are having baby showers and weddings oh. and, and parties, mm -hmm. and they want to customize colors and flavors. And I tell them, I'm like, you could do anything. You know, really, sky's the limit. We can do 
any flavors that you can really think of and incorporate it either in the shell or in the filling or both, whatever you want to do. What? So you had butter popcorn is coming up. You have the matcha. What are some other interesting or maybe outrageous flavors that you've you've brought brought up over the, yeah. <laughs> the past oh four my years. God. So many, so many. We did one that one of my favorites was we had a beet infused macaron. Oh. And so Oh I bet that coloring was gorgeous. Bright, bright pink and bright like red flecks on the top. Um, and that one was really delicious. We've done um, Earl Grey. We did one recently and it the shell was painted to look like a foggy London fog oh, day. I love so we it. infused Earl Grey in with um, a milk and need a ganache, so it had this like silky but also really like creamy uh, Earl Grey tea, and then this beautiful shell that was like speckled. And oh, really pretty, gorgeous! Yeah. Uh, well, now I want to go get one and the the, sure. the macaron. Day, did I say it right that time? Oh, okay. I'm learning, everyone. <laughs> and that day is coming up March 20th. Yes. All right. Well, thank you so much, Melissa, for joining oh, us pleasure. from Gracie's and Ellie's Bakery. So we're finding about the sweeter side of dining. So thank you again so much. Let's take a quick picture okay. uh, so we can post this on Facebook and then show Rick that we had a good time talking and rub it in his <laughs> yeah. face, right? Well, he's sick of the airport. All right, thank you awesome. so much. No uh, so we're here from the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center. We're going to wrap this up and bring on our next guest. So hang on tight, just one moment. <laughs>